friends, it's me, Christine. Welcome to my cozy corner of the internet. In this video, I'm gonna talk about what I was up to in March, some of the things that I did, and some of the fun things that I worked with and purchased. And it's just gonna be a casual chat through these things. And um, I haven't been feeling well. I had planned to do this video a little bit differently because um, I wanted to show you some of the clothing um, that I got, but I think I'm going to save that for a separate video um, and just kind of focus on the uh, magazines, the decks, some of the other items and the journaling supplies here. And then some, I've got some like TV shows and like some random things I want to share with you. Um, so let's jump into it. Um, so I decided just to go ahead and start with the journaling things because um, I got some fun stickers and I wanted to show you kind of the progress I've been making on my journal. And um, a bunch of people have been asking me about my journal. And um, so I thought I would make a separate video about, you know, just kind of journaling through a couple of pages and how I do it. Um, and I found a way that just really works for me. Um, so... I, I'll, I'll share that with you too. I've shared it before, but I'll share it in more depth. Um, <clears throat> I think I have like bronchitis. I've done like several, um, oh gosh, I've done several COVID tests and they keep coming back negative, but I definitely have some kind of like situation going on. I'm not really sure. Um, so that's been kind of keeping me really in slow motion this month. And um, the other thing that's been keeping me in slow motion is just my thesis project for school it is, is all encompassing and I haven't really been able to do much else so um, it's a miracle I was able to squeeze in as much as I, I was this month because um, that has just been taking so much time and um, I'm in the very very busiest part of my um, master's degree and it's all kind of piling on at the end and um, so I, I graduate in January and I know that sounds like oh my gosh you've got a year <laughs> But um, I do have to be finished with my book by September, like completely finished. And um, I'm only in the second draft right now, and it is just such a mess. So um, I've been really struggling through that. But also, in addition to the struggle, I've really been embracing all the growth and, and the different things with that. So that's been, it's it's been nice. Like, not, I have no complaints. It's just one of those, like, once-in-a-lifetime experiences where you're at your edge and you're really challenged to learn and grow. And so it's it's been very all-encompassing. So the fun things that I've been doing is I went so hard in my sticker journal. And um, I'll show you a couple of the pages, but I first want to show you um, some of the stickers that I recently got. And I tend to go to the same vendors over and over again on Etsy. Look, I have my peppermint tea, you guys. I'm going to take a sip. And, um, you know, they when they um, post new styles and designs, I will typically pick them up. So um, I got a bunch of things from the Tea Light Planner, um, some beautiful butterflies, and then it'll become evident how I work in all these things um, when I show you my journal pages. Um, little birds... Now, I like to use people. I, I like to put a person on every page and do these like little vignettes with a person and then kind of with a color theme. Um, so whenever I see people, I try to pick them up because um, I always seem to run out of people stickers first. And then I like these little decorative borders. So I got this, which I think is so pretty with all the little roses. Um, just some more little decorative edges. They actually have a... Um, I think they have a washi tape in this one as well. Um, so yeah, I like it when they're, the stickers are, um, you know, kind of flush to the edge. It makes for the best compositions. So um, yeah, I really like these. And I like it's, I like different sizes, different scales. So that I like the bigger stickers kind of mix with the smaller stickers. I do love these colors so much, like these Southwestern blues and um, oranges together. I think they're so pretty. Um, yeah, look at this one, C kind of coffee, Co coffee, oh my God. <laughs> it's coffee, <laughs> that's the new way to say it. <laughs> Just ignore me. <laughs> um, this is 
more coffee. Look at that, though. I mean, I will never get over coffee culture. Like, I, I'm in my head. In my head, I'm always sitting at a cafe. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, so I like different bits and strips and all kinds of things. Um, yeah, the little, this one's kind of had an Eastery theme. I think these are for specific size planners. Like this one might be for that Hobonichi size, but um, I, I just use like a regular, I forgot what it's called, Moleskine. I use a regular kind of um, notebook Moleskine, which is like my favorite. The, the pages are really nice. Um, so cute. And I, I like it when um, the stickers have all different um, little images and um, things like that. So like a boot with flowers, like who doesn't love that? Who doesn't need that in their sticker book? <laughs> right, I'm going to keep sipping off this peppermint tea. Um, okay. So the next stickers that I got were planning, planning, from, oh my gosh, were from planning with K. And this is another Etsy vendor. And, um, again, I'm really attracted to people because I like to arrange my, um, pages and vignettes with a person and um but typically I won't choose like like if I if I use one of these people um I probably won't use this thing at the same time I might but I like to mix it up with all the different um sticker vendors and and you know I, I really try, try to mix everything up I love this look like just from a fashion standpoint I think it's so cute the little double denim kind of Rosie the Riveter moment I think that's so cute what is this? Like, I want to be wherever this thing exists. Like, it's a little bicycle, like a coffee cart bicycle. <laughs> where is that? If you know, if there is this such a thing where you, wherever you live, if this thing exists as a thing, please let me know. I want to know where is, where are the coffee cart bicycles? <laughs> please tell me. Look how cute these girls are. I just love like the style, kind of that edgy, the edgy style. It's giving me a lot of inspiration, actually, fashion-wise. Um, it's just super fun. <clears throat> okay, so I guess we're out of coffee and into tea. And um, we've got lots of draping scarves in Planning with Kay. <laughs> but look at these, this gorgeous tea setup. I just love it. It's so cozy. Oh, look at her. I want to be her. She's got her little plate of oranges, her little tea. I guess this must have been like a Christmas from Christmas because it has like a little Christmas thing. Yeah, I always go for like the cozy, the cozy ones because um, I'm cozy and I like to be cozy. So I like to use, look at this little dog. Oh my God. I like to, you know, kind of facilitate the cozy mood in my sticker journaling as well. Um, this life with a cozy chair and the bookshelves and the sandwiches and the books. This is what I strive for. <laughs> One day I will have another puppy. Um, that Today is not that day, but um, yeah, I just, I this is my fantasy right here. Um, yeah, I really love planning with Kay. All her people are always so cute. I get a lot of inspiration from that. And again, this fantasy, this cozy fantasy is just like completely my jam, complete with puppy. Um, but like the little radio, I just, I, I live my life to read and think and, um, you know, have the adventures of the mind. That is, that is my adventure. I like real adventures too. Don't get me wrong. I like taking walks, but I like things that are, um, like I'm very small scale, very intimate scale with the things that, um, inspire me so I will stand there and look at moss and um just study the different like growth patterns of moss like that. <laughs> it's like that's what turns me on <laughs> so I like a very slow like kind of small um oriented thing so um yeah anyway maybe I'll get a cat I don't know um anyway I find these these stickers to be just so like inspiring they inspire my cozy fantasy so much look at her with her big stack of books like that is what I want a big stack of books with a bow <laughs> look at, I just love her because she's like I'm in my pajamas I'm sitting by my books yes 
Yes, yes. Um, I also, I really wish that I was a neutral girl. Like, like I wish I could pull off that fashion that's like neutral, neutral tones, tone on tone. I just look really washed out. And anytime I put on like a brighter, bolder color, it just looks really natural on me. So I, I wish I was this kind of like, it's just natural toned um, fashion girl. But unfortunately, it doesn't really look that good on me. But I'm jealous of the people that it does. Um, okay, now we're into some pastels, like pastel office. So one of the things that I did this month, this is reminding me, is I took um, Sarah Cannon is an author and she has several um, courses for authors. And she has just recently did her um, self-publishing. There's a name for it. I can't remember, but it's her self-publishing course, like her indie publishing uh, author course. And I, I've been taking that. I'm not finished with it. It's going to take me a lot longer. I think it lasted for six weeks and um, I like barely made it past the first uh, two modules, but, um, I'm just very slow when it comes to stuff like that. But, um, I did take her course and she, uh, right immediately after she offered this thing called HB 90, her business is called heart breathings. And it's like this 90 day planner kind of goals setup thing. And it was incredible. Like she's amazing. Anyway, what this is reminding me of is she kind of has this like vibe with her office, stuff like she just she's just truly such an open-hearted entrepreneur and um she writes YA fantasy which I've never read any of her books mostly because I don't really read YA but this is her vibe like she just has like this kind of you know um whatever the mood is here you know uh, I hate to call it like girl boss because I feel like that's kind of I don't know I, I've never really liked that phrase but um, it's kind of like her, I don't know. It's just really cute. And she's really cute like this. Um, she has that kind of energy, just very bright, very stylish. Like this kind of reminds me of her. Um, she's just super smart and very good at teaching. So anyway, I want to tell you about that. Uh, look at this. Um, I love these neutrals. Look at this. It's just so cute. Is this a waffle? Is that a waffle? Somebody put waffles in their art. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I love this. Okay, so planning with K is one of my favorites. And the reason why I like her stickers so much is because they're larger. Like it's, sometimes it's hard to find um, larger scale stickers. Like I'll order a sticker sheet sometimes and, this, and the sheet will be like this big, you know? So it's a little bit deceptive. It's kind of hard to tell sometimes how big these are. But if you're looking for slightly larger stickers, this um, vendor, Planning with K, is great. I also wanted to share some of these sticker books that I got off Amazon. Um, I haven't really quite figured out how to use these yet. I thought that they were going to be like those peel away stickers because they are washy, but they're not. They're like the whole page is a sticker. And so maybe the idea is that you're supposed to cut out um, the sticker that you want to use. And I don't really like to do that. Um, so I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to work with these, but um, I'll find a way. I mean, there, it's not, this is not a tragic purchase by any means. There's some really cute things in there, but I'm not exactly sure. I, I don't know if I would like this whole composition like on my page, um, but I do like these botanicals. So maybe I'll cut them apart. And since the pages are thin, you know, like that washi, um, I think, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal just to cut them apart. But I do like these botanicals quite a bit. I think they're really pretty. So I got those and then let's take a quick, okay. And then the other one is kind of more like foresty botanicals, like a lot of mushrooms, um, you know, ferns and that kind of thing. Um, so I really like both. I feel like the palette's really different here. Like there's a lot of greens and browns in this one. Whereas the other one's a little more like floral colors and these are more like leaves. Like I, I really love it when there's um, spruce and evergreens. So you don't really see that too much. Look at this little clover. How cute is that? Yeah. Anyway. Um, so I got these two little books. So the jury's still out on how I'm going to work with those. The next thing I got, this came in my box from the, the Ripped Bodice. Um, they, um, I have their monthly subscription box and they send two books plus a little treat. 
And so this was the treat this time, and it's very cute. It's like um, little sticky post-its. And I'm all about things that you can use while you're reading. Yeah, so to that end, I wanted to share these kind of highlighters. So they're called Diversibe, and um, you twist them, and they're almost like big crayons. So I think that these, if you can see, they don't, they, sm they smudge a little bit, but um, the idea is that you can use these as highlighters and they don't um they don't bleed through whereas some of those felt tip highlighters can really bleed through to your page and i think the um people who do bible study i think that the, these highlighters are kind of marketed toward them because the bible pages are like super thin so um, but I really like these for highlighting um, whatever I'm reading, fiction or even papers, all that stuff. I, I really like using these. And um, they do have a little bit of a smudge factor, like right in the first thing, but it's not, they don't, it's not like an art pastel where it smears all over the paper. Um, so I highly recommend these if you are reading something and you want to highlight that it doesn't uh, and you don't want it to bleed to the other side. So um, I'll definitely use all these for my reading experience probably I don't typically make like if I write too many post-its for myself like they get it, it creates chaos so I don't typically do that but and the last sticker thing I wanted to show you is um so I recent this is my I'll pull out a little bit um, this is my sticker tote I guess it's like this flat and I think it was for scrapbookers because it's square but I keep all my loose stickers in here um and so I went through all my stickers because things were getting a little bit out of control. And I put everything in these little baggies. So these are all, like, how I separated them was these are all, like, little bits, like little accent bits. These are all people, you know, because sometimes you just want These are all, like, kid stickers. Um, <clears throat> so I did go ahead, and this is uh, quotes. I did go ahead and repurchase some of the... Um, botanical type stickers on Amazon and I haven't opened this one yet but these are just like more botanicals and like little butterflies and then I just keep them in here and I'll show you how I use them but here's you know <clears throat> so this is kind of where I go like when I'm doing my journal spreads I will use these as accent pieces for the border so I wanted to share that I actually did that organization <laughs> in this month. Um, so let's take a look at my journal. So the first page is not necessarily how all the other pages are. And I wanted to show you, like sometimes I go back in and I will washi tape in different, um, like this is a piece of old, um, oh my gosh, wallpaper. Um, so I'll create little inserts and things kind of after the fact. Um, and I didn't, I kind of like pooped out on this one, but uh, so you can see I, will design my page and I've showed these pages before so let me kind of get into some of the ones I'll just I I do my stickering for the entire book and then I go back in and start journaling um so I'm journaling in this one now and I'm I have a whole other one that I am doing my sticker work in um so I will use the washi tape um and then you know I just create the I create little vignettes on the pages um, so I've got little people and I typically kind of go with like a color scheme. Um, so this one is kind of like black and brown. There's a lot of browns and oranges and autumn tones in, in my pages. Um, so, but you know, sometimes I try to keep, I, you know, I try to mix it up a little bit. So I'll do that and I just, I'll just put a show on and, and start, um, designing my sticker pages and just, they, they turn out how they turn out. Um, I was trying to find one that is, so here's one of those planner, planner by K. So I use the line journals, but they do make this in a plain journal. So, um, you can, you know, if you do, if that bothers you, you can, um, you know, get the plain ones, but I sort of like the line ones and it doesn't really bother me. Um, but anyway, I will go back in and you can see I, I I'll, find a color scheme for each page and the composition is pretty similar like I tried to leave enough room to write but I really enjoy doing it this way where I complete a whole book and then go back in and write um so I do have uh all different sources for my stickers and I like to mix them up 
you know, I like to keep it very mixed. And um, I, f I find that it's just, the composition just kind of comes through a little bit more in that way. Um, I like this one because it's like very like soft, you know. Anyway, that's what I do. But I just thought I would share some of my pages. Um, so now I am working in this one for my journaling. And um, yeah, so maybe that'll inspire you. So towards the end of this book, I started doing more, you know, bigger compositions. And I started do really doing the top as well. And I, I like that. Um, I like all the colors and I'll go back through. And so then when I'm ready to journal, I, I will sit with the little style of the page for a minute and kind of, I, I was using um, the writing down the bones cards to, to write, but then I transitioned to, um, I, I just started going to Pinterest and journaling, I mean, oh my God, and Googling journal prompts. And I would find like witchy prompts. I would find, um, you know, uh, well-being prompts, like whatever the mood that I'm in. And, and I found that to be um, a little bit more freedom, you know, like, like the writing down the bones, like, I don't know, I wasn't connecting with it too much. Um, so I wanted this to be just like light as light and fun. And, and of course, like, because I'm me, like the, the shadowy things always emerge and, you know, I'm always working on, um, you know, the, the dark corners of myself and, and they do come out in these journaling things, but I try to, you know, I try to keep it, uh, the original prompt to be pretty, pretty light and fun. So anyway, um, yeah, so now I'm here and, um, this, let's see, I don't think, it, yeah. So like, for example, on this prompt, the prompt I got from Pinterest is what am I looking forward to? That was really fun to actually explore that. Um, this one I made up, what does it mean to be self-loving? Um, and I just kind of started journaling about that. So I like to just have a little prompt at the top of the page and then just really kind of go for it. And I do kind of more bullet, bullet style. Anyway, so that's my journal, my sticker journal. So I recently posted a video about this deck and it's funny because as soon as I posted that video, I saw that, um, I know I'm Lisa Pepez, they're doing a deep dive over in her membership on this. Um, I don't know if it's already started or if it's coming, coming soon, but she actually posted, I think she got into contact with this creator and got some books. Uh, a list of recommended reading, the the kind of reading that she did to research this uh, deck, and um, they were really cool. So I I definitely um, want to look into those because there's like some Scottish folklore books and things like that. But I thought, wow, there must be you know how like certain decks like trend. This is one of them because then so Lisa's about to start her deep dive. So if you are wanting to take a deeper dive in this deck. Um, sign up for her membership because um, I think that she's going to start doing that really soon. Um, and then the other thing I noticed was um, I was scrolling through Instagram and there was a post about uh, one of the tarot, I don't remember who it was because I'm not on Facebook, but she had a Facebook group where they were going to do a deep dive into this deck. So, um, I, I, so this deck holds something for people. Um, it has a mystique. It, there's a draw to this because um, I know it just came out, but a lot of decks just come out and there isn't quite this like moment, you know? So, so anyway, I did a video about how to work with this deck. Um, and I actually had created a video of a spread and it didn't work. And I was like, what's going on? You know? <laughs> So then I like went back to the drawing board and really figured out. So if you're interested in that, I'll leave the, I'll, I'll leave the link below. Um, but anyway, yeah, this, this deck was so interesting to play with. I really enjoyed working with that. Just got this deck in and I had pre-ordered this thing ages ago because I love the Oracle. So like the Oracle by this creator is one of my favorite oracles of all time. Um, and so I was pleasantly surprised at this like super beefy book. Oh my gosh, look at it. It's gorgeous. Um, and so this is the tarot. I haven't opened it yet, guys. Look, it's still in the plastic. Um, but I've seen um, 
a couple of walkthroughs on this because I literally just couldn't wait. Um, so I am so excited to work with this deck coming up in April. And uh, this, the, the uh, card stock is different in the tarot versus the oracle, uh, but I'm so excited because I just love this artwork. So I did just get that in. Um, yeah, but I, I probably won't do a walkthrough because there's so many other walkthroughs of this, but, um, I will share the spreads and how my working with it comes out. So I'm looking forward to that. Also, I didn't have this when I got the witch sisters. Um, I hadn't heard of this, you guys. I'm sorry. I just didn't know. And, um, so I saw that it was like from the same creator of the Hidden Realm Tarot. And I was like, wait, what? The Hidden Realm? What? <laughs> Sometimes I'm just like so behind. Um, so anyways, I did pick this one up and I do really, really enjoy her artwork. So I don't know. I'm not really like a fae person yet. I should say yet because I am a fae person sort of, but there's so many other pulls, like stronger pulls. Um, so, but I really wanted to have this because I do, you know, at some point, I think it would be interesting to really explore Fae and the Celtic lore and all that stuff. But, um, I just, it's not my go-to. So, um, I did pick this up though, and I do like the energy of it. Um, I do prefer the witch, the witch sisters, but, um, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I, I, I wanted to have both, uh, because I do enjoy her artwork so much. So the jury's still out on this one. I haven't really worked with it, but I did go ahead and pick it up and I'd be very curious to hear what you think about it. Recently was this Alice in Wonderland because I have, um, some plans for working with this deck and, um, so that'll be coming soon. This is actually my first Jasmine Beckett Griffith deck, I think. Do I have another one? I don't think I do. I think I bought one and I sent it back. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Um, I like her artwork a lot. I really, really do. Um, but the big eye thing, like, I see it so much as a keen big eye um, in that whole movement. And so I just, I don't know. I've just really never been able to kind of get into the depth of this art style. And it's not that I don't love it. I do love it. I don't know why. Um, it just hasn't really connected with me, but I, I have a specific idea in mind for this. So I did go ahead and pick this up and, um, I would love to know what you guys think about the Jasmine Beckett Griffith and Lucy Cavendish decks. Like, are there something that you, um, are drawn to in your collection? Like I, she's got all these really cool decks, like the vampires and she has a shapeshifter deck and they're all super cool. Um, but I don't know. There's something about the big head, big eye thing. And I'm just like, I don't really know about this. So, um, yeah, I, I'm just curious, like if you are drawn to these, this art style, will you let me know what, what speaks to you about that? I don't know. It, to me, it just looks like children's illustrations. Um, I, you know, the one that really stands out to me is the Chicoli. Like that one for, for me, it, it kind of captures, I think the energy that, um, w you know, kind of blended with the, with the dark, the shadow and light that Chicoli, the Chicoli decks seem to do that, um, a little bit better for me. So anyway, please let me know what, how you work with the Jasmine Beckett Griffith decks. And, um, now just to like, for clarity, I'm talking about how you work with them in spreads and stuff. I love this art individually, but I'm not really sure how they fit together in terms of doing a reading. I guess that's what I'm trying to say is just like, if you work with this and you're ha and you have a lot of success, let me know. Okay. Um, but anyway, I haven't a specific, a specific idea in mind for this. So, so I recently did a big magazine purchase, uh, because I keep picking up these like ghosty magazines at the grocery store. So I went to the website and they had all these issues that I hadn't yet. <laughs> I hadn't had yet. Um, so anyway, one of the, um, one of the vendors of, you know, they had this little booklet by sweatpants and coffee and I didn't, I thought this was going to be like magazine size. 
So I was kind of excited when it came and it's just this like little journal and it's so sweet. So I went, when I went to their website, I saw that um, it's really sweet and their mission is really sweet. It's very positive and um, they had a lot of like little prompts and things and I don't know, I just thought it was really cute and I like how it has all the, the little handwritten font and oh no, it's a little bit, um, you know, sometimes I like to do things that are just so um, relaxing and I like, you know, that things like this are kind of like inner child type stuff. So I was kind of excited about this and a little bit delighted by the outcome. Like I didn't really know what I was going to be getting. So um, yeah, so this is the comfort and encouragement journal. <laughs> really like that okay so here's some of the magazines i got um history's creepiest you know what I, I, I think it's like i'm just leaning into the fact that my brain is a <laughs> is a complete paradox because in some some ways i love like it's got to be soft and cozy and comforting and then i don't get shit like this <laughs> that is just like and i like creepy books and I like creepy shows like, oh, one of the shows I wanted to tell you guys that I watched this month because I, I rarely find shows that I'm just like, oh, you got to see this. And um, it was a show on Netflix called American Nightmare. I'll put a little picture right here. Oh, my God. Yeah. Whoops. I was completely like I binged that show and it was amazing. Two women directed this short series about this couple and their story and it was equally parts um, amazing and enraging and just so good so that was called American Nightmare on Netflix and so if you're into true crime and some of those shows like I really like Cold Case Files and that kind of thing I don't like all of those shows I have certain like pet favorites um I like the Palazan show <laughs> and I like uh the one where they have, like solve the crime based on video evil something I can't remember but anyway so I do love my creepy creepy stories now I love ghost stories and one of the things that I write about in my stories is ghosts and I love the idea of the middle space and um unrest souls that can't find their purpose in the afterlife like I know it's crazy but um anyway so I am really obsessed with the lore of ghosts and the lore surrounded by you know what, what emerges um in that space between death mourning and history so anyway I picked up this one the history's creepiest ghost stories I also got this one ghosts true tales of horror <laughs> You guys, now I'm very particular about the kinds of stories that I like. I don't like gore. I don't like horror movies typically. Like I like um, Crimson Peak. That is a good example of the type that I like where I like it if it has a lot of style and it's just like marginally creepy, but um, not gory, you know, and I like beautiful costumes. So it's that mood. Um, and, but I, I don't like things that are, violent necessarily even though crimson peak was violent um it had some violence in it but i close my eyes when that happens <laughs> um but i do like the spooky things i like beautiful spooky things um so i like marie laveau i like you know any kind of i like the folklore elements of it um which is one of the reasons why last month i was talking about um, one of my new favorite authors, Simone St. James, and she finds the perfect balance between, um, you know, ghost stories with a romantic subplot. They're so good. She's such a good writer. Now, this one is kind of leaning into territory that I don't like so much. Like, um, I'm not into like ghost chasers. I'm not into like, there's one about the, the exorcist in here and I'm not really into that. I don't like it when it's uh, like, I, yeah, I'm not really into that. I'm sort of into like, a just like a historical folklore and sort of beauty the beautiful and I, I i guess you could say the sacred and the profane elements of um folk f ghosty folklore so anyway got that now i got this because um this magazine where women create uh 
it's been around for a while and they recently like I stopped getting it I don't know like 2012 or something I was super into it like 2008 2009 um and then I sort of got out of it and um then they switched um editors and so I wanted to check out the new editor and just see um so I got this and I guess they have two two products of where women create and what women create so I was thinking about um you know, checking this out and seeing how the magazine has evolved. So I got those. Then I got this one, Mindful You. Take a mindful moment. And I love magazines like this. This is my kryptonite right here. Like, I just love, um, I would definitely call myself like, I'm not a mindfulness junkie, not like um, that type of thing, but I just like the idea of mindful living and, um, you know, kind of s slowing and, and just enjoying the moment. And, um, that's why I like Bella Grace so much because it's like, um, every day, the uh, magical moments in every day, like I'm really all about that. So, um, I got that one to check out. And then lastly, <laughs> rounding it out, <laughs> vampires. Now you guys, I don't know if you know this, but there is such I know that you know vampires are a thing but did you know that people dedicate their lives to researching and publishing books about the folklore of vampires I'm all 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 about it like I could get into this all the different things all the different like the the way that vampires have been in the cultural lexicon worldwide for millennia. <laughs> I cannot get over it. And it the the idea of vampires evolves as the social constructs constructs of society evolve. And I find this endlessly fascinating just endlessly and of course one of my favorite vampire movies is this Francis Ford Coppola like the costumes are by this woman Aiko Ishioka and they were amazing you guys have seen it um but they're incredible and she actually did that like J-Lo movie The Cell which the movie was terrible and I actually turned the volume down and just looked at the costumes which were incredible um Aiko Ishioka has passed on but her costumes live in infamy especially the work that she did for Bram Stoker's Dracula but anyway I literally cannot get enough um I love the lore as it it as it um unfolds alongside uh you know the the politics and the culture worldwide so so Twilight is a good example of that. And I cannot wait to see what the next iteration of vampires in culture will be. I am just absolutely gobsmacked by it. So anyway, I'm excited about this one. Okay, so now we're getting into some random territory here. So um, I wanted to mention a couple of like clothing items that I, they're not like things I would try on. Like it's not like a fashion item, but like for a comfort and coziness. Um, so I recently got, ignore this, we're going to talk about this in a minute, but I recently got this free people onesie with a hood and I'll put a picture of it right here. And it is so comfortable. The fabric is so stretchy and soft and uh, they, it comes with and without the hood. And I wear this thing around the house so much and I put on my cozy socks and then I put on this free people. In fact, I'm wearing it right now. Um, this free people onesie and I think everybody needs one. You could probably, they probably have a knockoff on Amazon. I'm pretty sure because it's like one of those kind of popular items. But if this is all like a jumpsuit, a cozy jumpsuit is at all your jam. Oh my God. It's so cozy. I sleep in this thing, but the, there's one con and obviously that it is a jumpsuit and that you got to shuck your drawers to completely like use the bathroom. But um, I will put it like a little t-shirt and I put a pair of bike shorts underneath and that's just what I wear, like a couple of layers. And so I, I would be remiss if I did not mention how much I love this thing. Um, so I wanted to mention that as a monthly favorite. Now, the next thing is, so I, I, my motto with perfumes, well, one thing I was not supposed to buy any more perfumes this year. I was going to try to go on like a little bit of a, like a hiatus. Clearly that did not work out because I did purchase this. Now, Valentino has a line of these in Born in Roma fragrances. And I got one that was pink like this and I really liked it. And then I, I really like citrus 
sense. Um, and so I know not everybody does, but I'm a really big fan of citrusy kind of scents. And um, so I saw that they had a this yellow, which was supposed to be kind of citrusy, citrusy vanilla, um, a little bit of floral. But um, my motto with buying fragrances is I always buy the mini first to see if I like it. Um, and because a lot of times, like I like gourmand scents and a lot of times it's like, you get it and it just doesn't, it's just not quite right. Like it is actually chaotic to purchase a perfume over the internet when, without having smelled it. <laughs> um, but anyway, I did take a chance on this one and I loved it. Like absolutely obsessed. This is not like a great perfume for layering too. Like this, oh, so Nordstrom recently purchased, I mean, oh my God, recently put this on sale. It's new. It just came out and there's like a green one. There's a, there's a bunch of different flavors of this. And, um, so they put this, it was like 15% off. And I was like, all right, now they have three different sizes. So they have this mini and then they have like one that's one point something ounces, which is just outrageously expensive. And, um, and then they had this one that was 3.4, which is more than double for $30 more than the next size down. So normally I don't buy like big, you know, I, I won't typically buy like a big perfume. Like it's just too much and I usually get sick of it. But this one I really wanted to take a chance because I just went ahead and did it. And look at this thing. Look at the decanter. It's so beautiful. Um, so I did go for it. And it's not something that I typically, like, I, I can't think of the last time I purchased a whole big one of these. Actually, I can. The last one was probably three years ago, and it was that Gucci Flora. Um, so I don't really buy the big ones very much, but I did buy this one, and I'm excited about it. It is chunky. It is ready. <laughs> And I loved this. I loved it. so, But it's definitely kind of a lemony gourmand. And I just wanted to share really quick something that somebody told me once that worked at Sephora. And I would be curious to know if you have found this to be true. Like if any of you know about perfume, let me know if this is true. So she told me to always look at where the perfume was manufactured. And she said if it was made in France that it was always better. I don't know why she said it was better, but she's just said like they use more whatever ingredients. Like she was just like always get it, get, look for if it's made in France. Cause she said there's, they're made variety of different places. Um, but anyway, I just want to point that out. And if anybody knows why that might be, let me know. Um, but anyway, so I got this like big fat born in Roma yellow dream and because of my cold, I can't smell it. So <laughs> I'm going to have to put it on the shelf and just wait, um, for the day that I can actually smell. So anyway, I wanted to share that. And now is the time that we're getting into like the weird part of the video. <laughs> um, so this thing, okay, I gotta, I just gotta share a couple of like really weird basics with you guys. Cause <laughs> this thing has like changed my life. So, um, okay. So two things first, um, I've been getting these little like, um, body suits from Amazon and they are so nice. So I don't like to wear a bra because, um, I find them binding and they make me crabby. So, um, I, it's not that I don't need one. It's just that they're un so uncomfortable. Like I'm instantly angry, like when I have to wear one. So I've been looking around for, you know, alternatives for years and I was wearing like, you know, tank tops for a while. And then I finally found, I was like, God, it, it's been a journey actually, because, um, I was doing like Rate, like not racer bras, what are they called? Running bras, but those were too tight. Like everything was too tight. And it was just like making me, it was ruining my life. Let's, let's put it that way. <laughs> so I recently found, um, last within the last year, these little body suits on Amazon. And I'll put a picture right here. They come in black, white, and gray, and they're just basics. And I get, so they come in like a really wide range of sizes. So like whatever your size is, go up at least two sizes. So if you're a, like a small, get a large, or if you're a large, get a two X because they're still really, they're still, um, 
they're appropriately sized, but I like mine on the looser side. And so um, once I figured out what the right size was, I find them to be, oh my gosh, they're so comfortable. Like they hold me in enough up top and um, they, they just, they just are super kind of cottony and stretchy. They're not like, um, you know, like the Spanx ones, they're too tight and they go up my butt and it's just like, that makes me crabby too. So I found these and they're kind of grandma. Like these are not like your sexy, they're not sexy if that's what you're trying to go for. But if you want comfort and just something that you can like put on, throw on your jeans and a cute tee, I'm telling you, these are so comfortable and I have them in black and white. Um, and they go that they have like, sometimes I get them as low as $12. Sometimes they're like $18. The price varies, but, um, they're amazing. Love them so, so much. Okay. So to that end, this is another weird thing that I got recently off Amazon and this little thing, what could it be? It is a, I, it, this is what it was advertised for. And this is what I use it for. It is a little tabletop trash can. So it has this little like button, boop. And you can see I have some like cough drop papers in there. But so basically I put this by my chair and I was getting a lot of like little bits of trash by my chair. So like it, who knows where all the trash by my chair comes from. It was like, you know, cough drop wrappers or gum wrappers or um, I would, you know, grab a little a power bar out of the fridge and sit there in my chair and eat it and then I just didn't I wanted to kind of collect the garbage into one place um and so I started putting all my garbage in here and it's just been really nice it's just a cheap little plastic thing but it looks cute and it just kind of sits by my chair and I just put whatever garbage and then I empty it and it's just really nice so if you have this problem where you are constantly like in your chair you're doing your reading and you have a pile of garbage <laughs> get one of these they're super cute okay you guys that was my month and like I said I've just been working on my novel for school and it has been all consuming and um and then I've been sick at the end of this month so I hope that you <laughs> found some of these things entertaining and interesting and um thank you so much for being a part of my channel and taking this this month long what was I up to in March journey with me and I'll see you guys in the next video bye